teaching English as a lingua franca, teaching ELF. Some of you might even wonder, is that even possible? After all, English as a lingua franca is not a variety of English such as British or American English. And since we can't define its lexical, grammatical features and package it nicely into a sellable course book, how would we go about teaching ELF? That's why in this short video, I want to go through the seven principles that I think could underpin an English as a lingua franca approach to teaching English. First, but also one of the most important principles behind an ELF approach to teaching English would be a greater focus on intelligibility and communicative capability rather than a focus on a set of lexical grammatical features and a focus on correctness and a focus on conformity with a particular standard native speaker variety. Instead, I think what's much more important is a focus on communicative capability and intelligibility in international context. Which brings me to my second point, which is focus on the pronunciation features that lead to that intelligibility in international context. And these have often been referred to as lingua franca Core. And I've done another video specifically on teaching pronunciation and on lingua franca core, so I'll direct you there and I'm going to move on to the third principle behind teaching English as a lingua franca, which would be using a wide variety of non-native speaker accents. The reason is very simple. If we want to realistically and authentically represent the English language in the classroom, we have to use many more recordings of non-native speakers than native speakers. Depending which statistics you look at, non-native speaker users of the language outnumber native speakers by at least four, if not six to one. Therefore, the likelihood of your average student of interacting with a non-native speaker in English is much higher than the likelihood of interacting with a native speaker. And this is also connected to my fourth principle, which is focusing on interactions between non-native users of the language. Typically, in course books, there are a lot of interactions between non-native and native speakers or between native speakers. But genuine, authentic, interact, communicative situations between non-native speakers, which can serve as a great and authentic realistic model of how English is used nowadays are much rarer. Therefore, I think it's really important to focus on those in your teaching. The fifth principle would be a focus on intercultural communicative skills, as opposed to focusing on the target culture. And by the target culture, I mean the supposed culture of the native speakers of that language. So in our case, very often what is done is a focus on either British or American culture. But since English is a lingua franca, is an international language, then what's much more important for our students is an ability to navigate their way in between a myriad of different cultures, different first languages and different peoples. That's why it's very important to focus on intercultural communicative skills. The sixth principle is using non-native speakers as valid models of the language. Often when we present new language and we have, for example, a listening, which is supposed to model maybe pronunciation, maybe some new lexis, some new grammar, some new communicative structures, we will use standard native speaker voices for that. And our students will be encouraged to imitate, for example, the way native speakers speak their pronunciation or communicative strategies that typically a native speaker would use. And this only perpetuates further the idea that native speakers are better models 
of the language by the very definition and th therefore that they are also better teachers of the language. That's why I think it's crucial as well to use models of highly proficient non-native speakers of the language, which are abundant, in fact, in your classes. And finally, the last, but it doesn't mean that it's the least important principle, in fact, I would say it's probably the first thing that you might want to do before adopting a more ELF-oriented approach to teaching English is raising the awareness of your student and promoting an ELF mindset, which is something that I devoted a whole video to, so I would direct you there as well if you're interested in finding out more in practice how exactly to raise awareness of your students. If you found this video interesting and would like to learn more how exactly to teach English as a lingua franca, see practical examples, practical activities that you can take and use in your classes, then don't forget to check out TEFL Equity Academy and sign up for your free trial right now.